I want to talk about real quick the, the report that the Charlotte Hornets are interviewing Lindsey Harden, who is the G League coach for the Kings minor league team, the G League team, whatever the hell they call that team. I am an old guy. I'm 46 years old. I come from a different generation. I don't think that men should coach women, and I don't think that women should coach men. That's how I feel. I think that there's a big problem where you skip over coaches who've been coaching in the NBA for 20 years as assistants and don't get an interview. But because of some woke agenda that the NBA wants to put together to have women coaching in the NBA, you basically shit on people that have been doing it for a lot longer and are far more experienced and qualified. If she was to start off like Eric Spolster did as a video coordinator, the way people typically start off as coaches, that's one thing. I'm still not a complete, I'm not a proponent of women coaching men because I'm not a proponent of men coaching. I don't like that. I don't, I don't even know if there's any men coaching in the WNBA anymore, head coaches. I don't know. But I, I don't think they should. I know initially they were. They should. I don't think they should. I think there's plenty of qualified women who can coach women's basketball. I think there's, I just, I don't, I don't, I think men's, I think locker rooms, male pro locker rooms are some of the most toxic environments that exist. Nick knows this. I've seen some of his videos from when he posts some of this stuff that you cannot do with females in a locker room. You would have a problem. And I think it creates an unnecessary discomfort. Now, there could be some, there may be some players that are okay with it. I don't really think there will be that many, though, that would be okay with it because I don't think you can have a 5'8 female point guard tell a 6'6 six six point guard, 6'5 point guard, what it feels like to be guarded by a 230 pound man or how it is to, for a 6'11 power forward or center to box out another 7 footer who's 270 pounds. It's basketball is the same, but it's different. The games are different. We've clearly shown that there's a difference in the way the games are played. Men's game is played above the rim. X's and O's are great, but X and X's and O's and I mean we've seen. If, for Christ's sakes, we watched the game last night, Nick, with the Heat and the Hawks. It was one on one, one on one, one on one, one on one. None of that. It was no. There's no X's and O's in basketball anymore. Unless you're the Warriors when you're running around all the time. It. it I don't think that you should be. I don't think that you should take jobs from guys that have been doing it for a very long time. If she wants to work from the ground up, great. But her first job was assistant coach for the Sacramento Kings. Her first coaching job. She never coached women. She didn't coach in college. And she skipped the line to become an assistant coach. How does that happen? It's because the NBA is pushing this hard. And I don't know that they actually talk to their actual players, but the players are probably too afraid to say, I don't want that. What are the G League guys? The G League guys can't say anything. They can't say anything. They're in the minor leagues. Like, we do what we're told. But guys making $50, $60 million, they dictate the league. We know this. Coaches get fired every day because a player doesn't like him. We know why Adrian Griffin got fired. It was probably because Giannis didn't like him. He had a problem with him. And they're doing it in football too. There's no. I asked you the other day, Nick, could I coach you at cornerback? The answer is hell no. And I know football, and I've coached football, but I never played cornerback. So I could tell you what I think you're supposed to do because I've watched enough film on it, but I couldn't show you. I couldn't ever put myself in your position to know what it feels like to have the fastest dude in front of you guarding that, covering that guy. Could I? No. And I don't think a corner can coach a defensive end on how to be a better defensive end. You'd be surprised it happens. Yeah, and those things probably suck. <laughs> um, if you have a corner coaching a defensive end, I think that team probably is terrible. Probably usually linebackers are some shit. <laughs> but, and then the, the comeback was that, you know, and I think that, I think playing at some level, college in a book, at least at a collegiate level, to be a professional coach in that sport is a, is a necessity. I know there was at least one coach that didn't. That was Todd Haley. His dad was like in charge. He was working for the Jets at the time, and he grew up in football, played Little League football, didn't play beyond that. 
and his career as a coach. He, I mean, he, he, but he came from the bottom. He didn't get, oh, you're an assistant coach now. So, and that's a, the one exception. Mike McDaniel played at Yale. He played football in college. Like, he did play football. People think he was a, he's a big old dork, but he played ball. So, I can't coach in the NFL. I didn't play college football. I can't coach at NBA players. I didn't play in college basketball. And I just think that we've turned this thing into a situation where we're trying so hard to appease this idea of everything's inclusive. No, it's not. I can't go work at Hooters. I know that sounds stupid. I'm not going to be, go be a Victoria's Secret model. Have a whole bunch of men take all the Victoria's Secret model jobs and see how the women feel about that. They won't like it too much. I think we have to, it just, we have to, everything is not inclusive. Mm-hmm. I don't pledge, I'm a, I'm a member of Phi Beta Sigma. We don't pledge women. <laughs> and Zeta's, Zeta Phi Beta, AKA, all the female stories, they don't pledge men. Mm-hmm. There are things that are for men and there are things that are for women. What is the fucking problem? Why have we gone in such a fucking direction where we have to make everything everybody? No, we don't. There are things that are for men, things that are for women, things that are for kids. I can't go on the kitty slide at the damn fair. Too big. <laughs> <laughs> so I just think that this thing where we're pushing it, and you know, let alone put her. Are you gonna hire a a, a a young, inexperienced female coach to go coach a bunch of young kids that with the Charlotte Hornets who were terrible? Can you imagine the cluster fuck disaster that would be? You'd actually have a better chance with a female coming to coach a good team than a bad team. Because those are more mature players typically and not a bunch of babies who are a bunch of demons. That said, I just think they should men coach men, women coach women. I'm sure I'll get crucified for this. I don't care. Deal with it. You've done it again, Rudy. You've done it again. Give me 800,000 views and I'll be happy. You've done it again. But no, I I, I agree with you. You break it down like that. I don't, if you're going to have men and men do, you know, men coach men, women coach women, I'm all for it. There's enough qualified people on both sides of the spectrum to do it, to do it now. Before, it wasn't. So that's why men coach women's basketball. Exactly. But now, that's why you're right. Exactly. But now things have changed. Now we could split it. And it shouldn't be a problem with doing it because there's more than enough jobs on the women's side. There's more than enough jobs on the men's side. We know why. We know why Lindsey Harding would want that interview. She'll make three million dollars coaching men. She'll make fifty grand coaching women. A hundred percent. I'll take it too. I don't blame her. I don't blame her, but you I just blame spit, her. you're just spitting out what's what's real and what's yeah, you know. I don't blame her. I blame the freaking leagues for kowtowing to this freaking and this she, new. She won't get the job. It might it just might look good to do it, but one day it's gonna happen. One day it will happen, and the day it happens. And the day it happens, you cannot go back, man. So if you really want men to coach you, you guys better start opening your mouths because the day it happens, within 15 years of that day, half the league will be. It's gonna be. Coaches. It's gonna be like the black coaches in the NFL. Oh, we don't have enough women coaches. Think about how many black male coaches get overlooked in professional yeah. sports, and now they got to deal with worrying about females who have not had the experience and the work that they've yeah. done over the course of yeah, the years. Yeah, that's the difference between the. And now you're jumping over these guys. That's too. the difference between the black men and the women in you know in this argument because the black men were, they most of them played in the league, they had the experience, All they just weren't getting the job. League. So this one is just it's. There are things that are different and should be kept different, and we have to accept that. Just like double standards, we have to accept that. We already talked about that before. I can go back to when I was covering and write and writing. There was a time I don't know if you remember Donald, but there was a time when uh, women couldn't go in male locker rooms mm-hmm. after a game. Writers. Yeah. There was a time, and there was a big fight about it, and eventually the leagues all freaking bent over and said, "Oh, it's okay." Well, how do you feel as a man when you're walking around butt ass naked? And this woman reporter is walking around like, like there's certain levels of discomfort now because I've been in male locker rooms and dudes walk around naked. I mean, Nick, I'm sure you I've been in hurricane locker rooms. I'm like, hey, put up a damn towel, bro. <laughs> Please. But but they don't let men and women locker rooms. Why not? Why not? They still to this day do not let men into women's locker rooms, but they let women into men's locker rooms. Yeah. Why is that happening? Because there's ridiculous. double standards. <laughs> and... I, I can promise you that the men going into a WNBA locker room are not going to be too excited. 
All right, we're done. We're done here. We're done here. I'm wrapping it up the show today. Thank you for watching Come On Now, the podcast. Please be sure to subscribe, like, comment, and ring that bell so you get up-to-the-minute updates when we publish new content. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram at Come On Now Podcast and X and TikTok at Come On Now Pod. Thank you again for supporting this channel. Thank you.